So, um, for those who may or may not know, I was on staff at Inner City uh, Church in Fort Myers, Florida, Cornerstone Ministries. Um, at the time that I went on staff, that particular uh, neighborhood, the neighborhood was called Dunbar, um, was a, a Harvard, I think, had run a study and had labeled that community as, or Fort Myers, uh, as the most segregated city in the South, and like sixth in the nation. This is the neighborhood that I was working in. This was the neighborhood where I would go to the five housing projects and bus in my kids. And um, just to be transparent with you, I, I had 99.9% .9 black kids. I think I had one Mexican kid one time. So it was a very racially segregated area of town. And it was literally the other side of tracks. Like it was literally a railroad track that separated from the other part of Fort Myers. And um, so I went on staff there. I had a passion to, uh, to reach kids um, in the inner city, um, partially maybe because of my background, but partially just because I felt like that's where God wanted me to be at. And so because of my work there, um, every year they would invite our church and myself because they knew I rapped. I just started rapping. They, they uh, it would invite us to the MLK celebration. And so we would get up there and we would perform or I would do street ministry and things like that. And so we were always part of the community. We always had a great, um, just a great repertoire with the, with the neighborhood, et cetera. All that to be said, Flash forward many years, uh, I'm full time with the music. Um, I wasn't on staff at the church anymore, I was just really full time, always on the go. So I hadn't been back to the MLK celebration in a long time, but this is now I'm a father, I have two, two young boys, and I have a passion that my kids will understand what others have gone through. Um, not even myself, it's not like I grew up in a segregated uh, uh, high school or something like that, but I wanted my kids to understand what uh, what civil rights leaders had to go through um, to to see change. So I bring my kid down there. Uh, you know, we're out there playing. I mean, they're still pretty young at the time. So how much of it they could understand, I don't know. But you know, me being the dad, I'm like, do you understand what this is about today? Do you, do you realize why we're here? Yeah, Dad. Can I just go play on the playground? I'm like, all right, cool. So. <laughs> I realize it's all being lost on him. He's not getting it um, because he doesn't even have a reference point to understand. And so I'm watching the playground, and he's, you know, to be honest with you, we were one of a, maybe a small percentage of white families out there, probably a black thing. Um, but my kid was playing, like, didn't think twice about it. So we're out there, we're doing our thing. You know, we stay for a couple hours, we decide to go. I was like, I don't think my kids really understood what this is about. So I wanted to bring them to a, uh, a black history museum, but unfortunately it was closed that day. Longer story short, I, I, I just go home. I felt like I was defeated. Like I felt like, ah, oh, I haven't taught my kid anything about unity. I haven't taught my kid about anything about the plight that people have gone through, nothing. I'm sitting in the, you know, my kitchen, I'm making dinner, I'm cutting it up. Now, I grew up in an all black neighborhood, all white neighborhood. I moved to where I live now, which is Cape Coral, and it's a predominantly racially mixed neighborhood. And even amongst my little neighborhood that I live in, it, you know, one of my neighbors is Haitian, another neighbor is from Trinidad, another neighbor is from Paraguay, another neighbor is from Puerto Rico, another neighbor is white. You know, it's a very racially mixed neighborhood. And um, we all get along just fine, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm thinking about this and I look up, <laughs> I'm cutting the salad or something like that, and it's like little black kid walks through my through my drive right through my kitchen. He's like, doesn't say a word, just keeps going. I'm like, all right. And this is like the first time this has ever happened. Um, Cause I look up, little, little Hex, Hispanic kid walks through, he's like, what's up? Like, and another little white girl walks by. Like I'm literally seeing the League of Rainbow Coalition going through my, uh, my living room. And next thing I know, it's like my little son, my little, you know, six year old is leading the pack. Like he's the leader. And I thought, I think I'm okay. He didn't even think twice about any of this. It was just like, I'm gonna go get these neighborhood kids, we're gonna have a good time today, and I'm gonna show up my room. And I thought, we as adults make things pretty complicated. You know, you gotta look back on what Jesus said. You have to approach things like a child. And uh, I, I, I think at that moment I realized, I was like, I think we're gonna be okay. Still a lot of work to be done, but I think we're gonna be all right at least we're moving in the right direction.